Hello everyone, welcome back. So it's another episode. Uh, what we have done is actually uh, we have spot welded the other side of the chassis rail onto the inner uh, reinforcements. Uh, this is how it looks now. It's been welded together with the upper original side as well. This is the inner part. Here you can see the first patch. Uh, we have actually had to patch the uh, floor of the car because the uh, replacement metal is not large enough to cover that. Uh, here we have another additional support to hold the measurement. Uh, as you can see, this is the patch I've been talking about. And the chassis rail is now joined together along with the straight one uh, coming on to the rear uh, cross member that has been joined uh, onto the uh, seal now because uh, the seal will have to be changed as well. This one has been measured uh, from, the, from this jacket point. Now uh, we're going to progress with uh, rebuilding this bit here uh, and the battery tray and the inside of the A-pillar. As you can see we have a replacement metal here. Uh, these supports have been already done so we have some stuff already checked out but more stuff coming up uh, so we're having uh, good progress I think and now we have to continue. Uh, as I've stated before you have to watch the order in which you are cutting away and rebuilding so the previous job you made is holding the car together for the next job you're going to do so you can just keep cutting out parts because uh, it will ruin the structural integrity of the car and also you can lose the measurement uh, that have to be straight so the car will go straight. As you can see right here I'm using a chisel and a small hammer. The rusty metal is very brittle so it will break away pretty easily. Uh, I'm doing this to gain access and to create space for the new replacement metal that we will put on later on. Uh, we have given in a tubular reinforcement in the engine compartment and where the door should be. So we are keeping the A-pillar uh, nice and firm when we are doing this. Uh, and now as you can see we are going to compare the old rusty sheet metal to the new replacement that I got from Dr. Manta online shop in Germany and to see how it's going to look after it's going to be replaced. So what you see right here is my father is grinding off the top of the spot welds. Now this is done to weaken it so we can separate two sheet metals more easily. Now when using a chisel and a hammer to separate two of the sheet metals you have to be mindful of the angle that you are approaching it because the spot weld will normally be a lot stronger than sheet metal surrounding it so you might see some tearing of the sheet metal around the spot weld. This is one of the ways to separate two sheet metals. Here you can see the bar that we have installed in the engine compartment to keep the length. We will talk about these reinforcements a little bit later on in the video. As you can see we are now separating the two sheet metals of the A-pillar. Now I am wiping the fresh sheet metal part with a rag soaked in nitro thinner. Now the main point of this is to get the surface degreased so we can apply primer paint. You could also use anti-silicone cleaner which is a little bit less aggressive and also gets the job done very nicely. As you can see we have some deformations of the part on the part when it was manufactured but this is okay it can be straightened out uh, so it will not be visible afterwards. Now I will apply a coat of primer color. Uh, I am using a one component pr primer, this means we are not having a hardener with it uh, which is actually making the job a little bit faster and easier because uh, you don't have to mix it up for every part that you're going to uh, paint. It's not as uh, strong as epoxy primer but uh, a lot of it will be sanded off because we're going to apply epoxy primer and this is just to prevent the part from uh, rusting any further while it's sitting and also uh, putting this in hard accessible places will be good enough to keep the rust out because the car will not be driven on salty roads or wet roads and it will be taken care of so it will be more than sufficient to protect the metal and also we're going to apply basic paint and also wax after everything will be done so the metal will be sufficiently protected. We are opening up the A-pillar so you can see the inside where the reinforcement is for the door hinges. Uh, now later on we will do a hammer test. Uh, 
test reveals that the metal is strong but has surface rust. Now we are turning around the part. We are going to decrease the surface using nitro thinner again. Again you can use an anti-silicon cleaner just to get the fingerprints and stuff off so the primer will have a better adhesion. Now as I was doing it I saw some small spots uh, where rust begin to appear because this is exposed fresh metal. I have used a small water brush attachment for the drilling machine and just went to work with it. Just water brush wherever you see some small spots you can use a, a rust removal if it's necessary but again if you only see some specks it not, it's not that serious but just for the sake of details take extra 5 minutes and uh, inspect the part as necessary. Now we're going to use primer color to protect the freshly exposed metal and to prevent it from getting rust. I have also decided to do another coat of primer color on the battery tray just because the first one was uh, done quite kind of fast and was visible streaks from the brush. Now this part will be installed with the A pillar because it's providing some extra structural strength. It is connecting it to the firewall and with the engine compartment so it's nice to prepare this part as well. Now as you can see we're going to start to prepare the inside of the a pillar. Uh, what we're going to use right now is we're going to use an angle grinder with the grinding disc. Now be mindful that this is a very abrasive approach and do not rely on it a lot. This is just to get rid of the really rough stuff on easily exposed surfaces. You have to be mindful that the angle grinder doesn't suddenly grab because it's going to jump and you can get hurt. Always use protection of course. But we're going to use two approaches to remove this kind of rust. We're going to use a mechanical approach as you can see right here. And later on we're going to use a chemical approach. Now this is not the only tool that we're going to be using. The next tool in our disposal is going to be of course the trusty old wire brush tool. Now this wire brush attachment is a little bit stronger with some thick wires so it's going to be a little bit more aggressive. Now also be mindful that this can grab at any time and it's really hard to hold on. Use it on a little bit bigger angle grinders just because it can eat your bearing or even destroy your angle grinder. So this is also just to get rid of the really large area rust. Now for the little bit more refined rust removal we're going to use another tool and this is going to be our trusty little hand wire brush. Now if you think that this project is going to go without elbow grease you are very wrong. Now it started to put those shoulders to work and start working on the car. Now this is just for the tight spots that we cannot access with uh, multiple tools. Uh, of course I'm going to show you one more tool that is very helpful with uh, little spots and tight uh, corners but you can still get a lot of it uh, removed just by using your hands and a uh, wire brush. Now, this is just a demonstration of what kind of tools you can use with a job like this. The next thing that we're going to use is going to be the Dremel tool. Now the Dremel tool as you can see right here is uh, run by compressed air and it is very nice because you can uh, put on different attachments and really get into this uh, small corners and stuff like that. So it's pretty nice but you have to be careful if you're using a uh, grinding stone it can fill up and start to lose efficiency so it's nice to get rid of the rough stuff first with a water brush and then go with this one to get more refined finish. We're going to also give it another pass with a wire brush you have multiple attachments with a little bit bigger on the, or a little smaller heads but this is going to be perfect to get rid of the rest of the rust just to get the really refined finish so we can move on to the chemical removal of the rust that you're going to see in the next step. We are at the A pillar, as you can see we have a hole, and this is not magic. Uh, we are doing the reinforcements of the inner A pillar, as you can see this one is not available to purchase, so we are going to repair this one, because it's pretty ok, so it's repairable, we don't have to do it all over again, and the shapes are pretty complex, and it's hard to uh, do it so it looks original, even though it's inside and it's not going to be seen. Uh, we still want the, the car to be uh, as best as we can do it, 
uh, we are doing an additional reinforcement on which we're going to uh, weld this one on. So we're going to have a little bit stronger A pillar, which is always nice. Especially if you drive a little bit sporty and stuff like that, the chassis should be a little bit firmer. This car doesn't have a B pillar, but on the E21 BMW I owned, uh, I used to see cracks in the paint job underneath the B pillar because the chassis was flexing when uh, driving a little bit sportier. So, you know, these old cars all are a little bit soft uh, in this apartment, so uh, do what you can to brace the chassis a little bit better. But this is it, the rust has been scraped off and we're going to apply rust converter on the inside and the outside. Uh, then we're going to put this one in. But the reason we didn't, we still have the outer one is because it's still holding the height. As you can see, we have we still have a brace for the car, and we have put additional one in the hood, so it kind of holds the whole length. Uh, the firewall will be holding the width of the car, and we have the chassis rail done, so we're still holding the height of the car, so we don't have. A, one part of the car harder than the other one, so I think all translations should be locked. There shouldn't be a lot of rotation, so I think it should be okay. Uh, when we're going to weld this one, so it's going to hold, then we're going to put in the inner one, which goes here, uh, and only then we can start removing the other one and replacing it, because we still need to have one bit in to hold the rest of the car. So as mentioned before, do, in, uh, do work in a system, uh, try to figure out uh, the steps so the step you make will help you in the next step. Uh, yeah, I think this is it. Uh, I'm very proud of that patch. Over there is the first patch and we only have 999 to go. So we're on the road to success. This time next year we're going to be driving. What you see here is the inside that I've been talking about. Uh, this one has been painted the original red color that, it, that's, that the car is going to be, so uh, Cardinal Red. I think the color code is 508 uh, from Opel, because this part later on is, is, is very difficult to access, so we have painted it now, so we're going to have it protected and uh, it's going to be in the same color, so you know, later on if you're doing anything or someone else is doing something, uh, these details kind of show that the car has been done uh, well and that someone has been thinking about the details so you know these little things it takes a little bit more time but who cares so what you see right here is another invention from the workshop it's a threaded rod and on the end it has an attachment welded on a wire brush attachment it's on a it's mounted in the drilling machine and it's very nice for tight spaces such as A pillars, rockers or chassis rails. Uh, it really gets the job nice and gets the inside clean so you can apply rust converter or other stuff inside. So now we are applying the first coat of the polymeric rust converter. This particular one is from a company called NCH Europe and the product is called the Chalate. Now, a polymeric rust converter such as this is a water-based and it's going to turn the rust into a stable substance that is going to prevent the metal from rusting further. Later on, when it makes a film, you can put on a coat of zinc spray or a primer color and then continue with putting color as you would with a normally primed metal. Now, this product itself is going to turn from white to dark blue and black once it's done its job it's going to sit for 48 hours just so it completes the whole process i'm going to apply it on the outside of this reinforcement and also on the inside and then i'm going to protect it with primer color we have a video coming up in the next few weeks where we're going to test this product with wood rust converter and a rust removal product and we're going to test sample a few rust nuts just so we can see how it works and then we i'm going to tell you what product i would recommend on different uh, scenarios and different parts because there are some differences between them okay everyone this is it for today uh, the a pillar is now marinating in rust converter it already turned black so it means it's working it looks rather nicely uh, perhaps we should dip the whole car in rust converter but 
probably nothing would have left, so, you know. Uh, this is it. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you have enjoyed. Uh, we're going to see each other in the next video uh, where we're going to continue with the A pillar and then we will move on uh, to the other side and stuff like that. So a lot of stuff coming up uh, that's going to be interesting. Thank you and auf Wiedersehen. Ciao.